I have to ask you this, Jean-Paul Gaultier, because in April 2012, yeah. you had um, a, a, a show and you sent in a parade of Amy Winehouse lookalikes yeah. six yeah. months after she died. Right. And you know her family, Mitch Winehouse, her father yeah. said, that was in bad taste. He said, we're still grieving for her loss. Why did you do that? I don't think at all it was in bad taste. My, my, uh, you know, my uh, conviction, because I love her, I adore her. You never uh, met her, did you? I never met I went to see her, uh, mm. come on, to one of the show, one of the only, the only shows she did in Paris, you know. And uh, I, I went, and I was like, uh, frightened to go to see her, because I am shy, even if I don't look like shy, <laughs> but I was shy. And she was so an enormous uh, star for me, I didn't go after and say hello, you know. So, I, I love her. Or, uh, her voice, her style of music, but also her look. She has a look like a little, like a little in the spirit, because I was influenced. I am born in the 50s, you know. So my look of the 80s, I did, you know, were inspired but modernized, like the uh, 50s. The beehive, has, the beehive hair, the heavy eyeliner, yeah, black and eyeliner. also like a kind of corsetry, on tight stilettos, etc. So it was a little like my the look I have, and the mix, and she make it more, more punky, let's say, in some way. So it was exactly what I was, uh, exactly, it was in, exactly in the same spirit of what I did in the 80s. So I say, also for me, she was a fashion icon. And she was the only one, like, going, uh, do, uh, going against, uh, sure. not what was the, okay. doing the other one, copying nobody. So I respect so that and I wanted you to make an homage. You liked her style. Okay, you wanted to do that. But the thing is, yeah, we talk about how you like, you know, street yeah. fashion. And in fact, your exhibition at the yeah. Barbican is called yeah. From Sidewalk to yeah. the Catwalk. But you also worked, as we said, with some of the big couture names, you know, in, in fashion. Mm. How do you, like, like Hermes, for instance, yeah, yeah, how yeah. do you reconcile your edgy street fashion and yet working with a very conventional house like that? Isn't it a bit of a contradiction? Not at all. It was a complete uh, contradiction at the beginning. When I started, maybe when I started my first collection in 76, maybe Hermes was the opposite total of, I, of myself, which I didn't like and didn't know very much in reality, because I, I am coming from the suburb of Paris. And to be honest, there was not very much uh, women that were wearing a, a Kelly bag or, <laughs> or, or the Birkin bag, you know. Bag. Yes. So you went to Hermes well. in the early 2000s. So, yes, yeah. I went there. And I started to make the collection before it was Martin Margiela, was, which was one ex of my assistant, mm. which is the Belgian, very talented but how designer. Do you, how do you reconcile you being the enfant terrible and working with a very conventional house like that, so for doing me, the oak tour? It was funny because yeah. it was a little like going, it was funny and interesting and like a, mm -hmm. like a challenge for me. Because, for example, I, as was the opposite, Later by later, I did my couture, but for me, it was a little like to work at Cardin. Who, I have yeah. to mix, but at that time, I have to mix my uh, style, which means uh, my Gaultier style, let's say, to Hermès, who, but first to work for Hermès. So it was to okay. make little things that I but could bring to it. In this day and age, who can afford the real haute couture when one dress might cost, I don't know, 50,000 euros, that kind of thing? You're talking about maybe a couple of thousand women globally who might send a private plane and say, yep, let me see your latest collections, watch them, see them on video and say, make me, uh, you know, a dress like that. Who, who can afford it, this haute couture? I mean, like very few people. Yeah. I must say that I did couture because it was a dream, because when I started, you know, I saw at the TV again, uh, I saw only like image of haute couture. At that time, they didn't show the prêt à porter, you know. Mm. So uh, it was like a dream. And one moment, like I didn't do uh, Dior, I wanted, uh, I said, okay, but at that point, I will do myself. Instead to buy maybe a little studio for myself, I will put that money to, to make my haute couture. And I did, I think, to make it only one time. Mm. But in reality, I saw, I saw one uh, outfit to uh, Nicole Kidman and another one to a woman w with the dress that you just behind you is the one with a sailor stripe with uh, yeah. lace. Another you know? of your signature and, dresses, yeah, the, the marinière she, she stripe. She bought it for a wedding, for okay. a wedding. But who, so, but, so I went on and But went it doesn't on make do money, it. does it? I mean, it doesn't make money really, that very kind of it high make it more, uh, No, it doesn't it make doesn't. so much money. But, 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 I should say that uh, in some way, in the Prêt-à-Porter, I did already like a junior collection a long time ago, you know, which was like more open to a lot of people. In reality, to make couture, it's interesting because now you can like more experiment about sure. fabric and about like very technical things that you cannot do but in prêt But you need to sell to the masses and your late partner, 
Francis, yeah. Francis Menage, who tragically Menuge, died, yes. Menuge, Menuge, yeah. who tragically died uh, yeah. in 1990 of, of, of AIDS, AIDS-related um, yeah. illness, really encouraged you to build yeah. your empire and to make money, to go into fragrance, yeah. to go into that kind of thing. You owe him yeah, a great deal. Oh, definitely. It was and, fabulous. It was really my, my right arm or maybe my left arm and there was the rest. <laughs> I don't know. But he was not truly really absolutely fabulous and very creative and very clever. And more businessmen than me, I mm. must admit. Mm. And it's true that when he told me, he told me before uh, uh, he died, oh, maybe we should, because he was thinking mm. to leave uh, still, like, uh, you, uh, you sh we should do couture. And I say, why couture? Now it's more creative. We don't need that, blah, 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 blah. And he say, yes, yes, but you know, it's good for the luxury mm. thing is good for after maybe to make the empire. I didn't do it for to, uh, to, to, to do an empire. Mm. I did perfume, mm. yes, which was good like for go, uh, going on, and can help, you know, but, 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 uh, I, I never wanted to make an but empire myself, only to make my collection and uh, nice clothes that people appreciate and that people love me but through the clothes. profitability is important. And yet there's again a bit of a contradiction because when you were, um, advertising for models yeah. for one show, you said um, un conventionally pretty models need not apply and you are famous for using models in all shapes, yeah. sizes, colours, ages, older people and Definitely. that kind of thing. And yet um, you also managed to sell your product. How do you manage to do that? Because most people really want to see, they don't want to, as Alexander Shulman, the editor of British Vogue said, yeah. when people look at magazines, they don't want to see themselves, they want to see something that is desirable, perfection. But I think maybe people can open also his mind to see that there is not only one kind of beauty. There is different kind of beauty. You know, when I started, for example, with the model, at the time, there were only Swedish models that were in fashion in the beginning of the 70s, you know. So me, I remember that I always love. I remember one girl came. It was, she was uh, coming from America, and she was black, and she has, like, bleach hair. And I find her fabulous, and I wanted her to go and to make the show at Patou. But the, director artistic say no 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 you know the american people they can be like uh, uh, they are racist so maybe they will not appreciate and i was my god but on what we don't care anyway there is no there is no client uh, american and even french or whatever so i start always to show different kind of beauty mm -hmm. and in my show myself i always choose the model and i wanted to show for example farida kelfa my first the uh, algerian born model who you're yeah, very close to and yeah. she was completely completely mm -hmm. another uh, attitude and the look on attitude, I should say, and very modern, and for me she was perfect. But and I must yeah. say that in some way my only pretension is like to be sure of what I like about people that impress me. When I say one that I find beautiful, even if a lot of people don't like that kind of beauty, for me it's uh, more interesting and I insist. Sure, but you're not changing things. I mean, when, when Alexander Shulman says, you know, that uh, it, what sells is broadly speaking a middle view of what beauty is, and, um, you, you know, people say, actually, you know, the obsession with zero size models is actually worse than it was in the 1980s Definitely. when you had supermodels like Cindy Crawford who weren't stick thin. And so even at that time, I was losing even some more. Yeah. I don't you're think losing we're losing battle. because LA is in fashion, things are going and going away and going back. So it will come back. The, the, the. I don't say that uh, come on, to be with more shape is the best mm -hmm. and to have no shape is the worst or vice versa. No, I don't say that. I say that there is different kind of beauty. But your so, message is not getting through. Kirsty Clements, another editor of Vogue in Australia, yeah. I'll just tell you what she says. She says, we still have stylists and casting directors who for some bizarre reason seem to prefer models to be young, coltish, six foot tall and built like a prepubescent boy. Oh, to be honest, I hate that. I, I must say that truly is not exactly what I think. I think that even there is a taboo, you know what, of getting old. Like everybody, like uh, there is no beauty in, to be old. It's wrong, completely wrong. There is a lot of beauty. How can I find that to be fat and old is ugly in the fact that my grandmother, which was absolutely fabulous, you know, and she loved me and she was uh, fantastically beautiful mm. for me. Mm. So, of course, now I want to represent also that there is some people that can be old. I always presented some, uh, not every show, but uh, some people that were beautiful and 
old but, and some fatty. Okay. I use like uh, best ditto. Is that yes. it? it was truly I use. It's not but the term. She did my show sure. because but I insist. But why is it? But why do you think it's still like this? I should I should say that Natalie Bondil, who's the director yeah. of the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, who was responsible for persuading you yeah. to have this exhibition of your clothes, mm -hmm. says with the globalization of aesthetic standards ever-growing numbers are being exposed to the tyrannical succession of retouched photos displaying yeah, yeah, yeah. unreal bodies, Asian eyes, Western eyes, skin <laughs> whitened, smooth away the wrinkles as if politically incorrect. Why is the world of fashion like this? I think he, ha he has always been a little crazy and there is also, I think what I should say is that I have not critic to do about it. The only critic I should have to, be, uh, to make about it is that I think one notion that doesn't, uh, should not exist anymore is the notion of only one kind of, of, uh, of fashion. Mm -hmm. I mean like uh, now we are, there is different morphology of people. Now all the world is traveling and we seek a different type of ethnic, of beauty, ethnic, and we can appreciate. I think it's changing, little by little it's changing. Okay. So I think, look at the young, they are more open-minded maybe than the ones that are not that young. I must put this to you because La Domia Pucci, the daughter of the Italian designer Emilio mm. Pucci, has said Italy needs young designers who are going to generate excitement and create new categories of product. Young designers are the future. The problem in Italy is you have designers over the age of 70 who are still holding on to their position. Is it time for an older generation of designers to make way for the younger generation? Well, first, I am not 70. But no, <laughs> not I yet. know, you're only not in your yet. 60s. But uh, I must say that it shows that, uh, uh, come on, uh, there is a place for the young one, definitely. And it's like, uh, you know, already what I must say is that I feel like incredible that I am still there. We, because when I see the designer of my generation, there is not so much, you know, that which are uh, uh, there now. A lot, a lot change of life. Uh, uh, even my assistant, Martin Margiela, that uh, uh, Belgium designer, very talented, uh, that came out in the beginning of 90s, he, he quit. Uh, and he is uh, some years younger than me, but sure. he quit like some years ago. No, I, so yeah. I think maybe, of course, it will arrive. I my wasn't time. making you of, 70. Of, no, of, I'm sorry, Jean Paul, I no, was no, making no, 70. Can, but I finally, don't. finally, and briefly, you have this exhibition of your work. This yeah. is the eighth venue yeah. um, for it. Are you a living designer changing all the time, or are your pieces really belonging to a museum? I think that uh, in some way it doesn't, belong, uh, it doesn't belong so much into a museum by the fact that when I see that there is some young designers that do uh, come on, some, uh, let's say, like, uh, is very much inspired by the old clothes I did, uh, I say, and then when I see that there is some that you can wear now, you know, some of them, I feel like very comfortable in it. I say that is the best thing, you know. In reality, it's still go on. You see, even when I will retire, boom, they will go on to do things right that I have done before. So that's excellent for me. Jean-Paul Gaultier, thank you very much indeed for coming on Hard Talk. A real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.